Welcome back inside the Suburban Ford 7 Sports Cave. Joined now by the Oakland Golden Grizzlies head coach, Greg Campy. Big game today. That, that Metro Series rivalry, Detroit and Oakland. Last time you guys played, uh, Detroit got gotcha you at, uh, at home there, but now you guys get them in your building. What's, uh, That's kind of nice of you to say gotcha. They, gotcha. Kicked, they kicked the crap out of us. And we don't like them, so that that's not that didn't sit too well with the Oakland uh, fan base. So this is a big game for Oakland. Yeah, you, you, afterwards that game, you were very very blunt with us in the media, telling us that they did whatever they wanted to you guys, and you guys had no way of getting anything back out of that. How, how, your guys responded since then, though. We won seven in a row after that game, and I think that it wasn't a lot of fun to be a Golden Grizzly for the couple of days after that game. And our kids responded, and we learned from it, and. You know, they went on one seven straight, so I, I feel very good. It's a very young team, as you know, the youngest team I've ever had. And sometimes with youth, you know, they say it's darkest before dawn. And it was dark that day in Callahan <laughs> Hall, really dark. Kay Felder, his outstanding this year. Some of his stats are up with, I think he's one of the top, you know, as far as rebounds, assists, and points guys in the country. How has he been able to continue to develop underneath you in his own personal game? Well, a lot of people criticize me because I never take him off the floor. And in that first Detroit game, he got three, he got three fouls, and a tie game went to minus 13 like that. 13-0 run without him. And that's why I never take him off the floor. He's so important to our team. Um, he's got a chance to be an all-time great player, not just at Oakland, but for the state of Michigan. I mean, what he's done in his year and a half has been pretty amazing. Give us your outlook. You just got to take care of your own business, get a little help here on the way, or how, how do you see this shaping out? Well, the loss to Milwaukee really hurt us. We were in great shape until that loss. Now we need some help. And the only thing we can worry about now is we have to win today, and then we have four more. And if we can take them one at a time and win those four, stranger things have happened. Do you expect your guys to come out today with a little bit of added fire, just knowing what Detroit did against them last time? Are you hoping that? It's been discussed. Um, maybe once or twice. We, we, we might have talked about that game and spent 50 hours watching or 30 minutes watching film or something like that. It might have been discussed, but I'm going to tell you something. When Oakland played at Detroit last year, there were 7,000 fans. This year, there were 6,500. When Oakland plays today, we're going to set the attendance record probably. We're going to beat last year's Detroit game for the attendance record. There aren't other games like that at Oakland. This is the game. It is, doesn't matter about standings, it doesn't matter. This is the game of the year. And a lot of Detroit people don't want to admit that, but show me another game where they get 7,000 people and then, then I'll listen to them. But right now, it's the game. So yeah, there's pressure. The O Arena today, Metro Series rivalry. I'll be there. I'm gonna get a nice courtside seat. I was real close to you and your antics uh, for that first game. Hopefully, uh, you antics. know, antics. Is, well, that's the, it's, it's, a, it's a family show. It's a family okay. show. Well, don't sit behind a bench then. If, no cameras behind the bench if it's a family show. Coach, we're going to get you to sign the big board on your way out of here. Good luck today Thank against you. those Titans. Thank you. All right, thanks so much, Coach. All right, time now for our Pistons ticket giveaway. This week's winner, George Lomad. He gets four tickets to the game on February 22nd against the Wizards. Congrats, and if you want to enter, very easy to do so. Head over to WXYZ.com slash contest for a chance at a weekly giveaway of four tickets to an upcoming Pistons home game. We'll be drawing one winner each week, and this month's winner of the Pistons experience is Alicia Wilcox. She gets four tickets to the game on February 20th against the Bulls and gets to serve as the honorary captain before the game. Congrats, and if you want a chance to enter that as well, just head over to WXYZ.com slash contest. All right, time now to switch gears and ask the analysts. We've been scouring Twitter for your tweets, and we bring in sports producer extraordinaire Mike Foss in the control room who's been looking at these tweets. Mike, how's it going, man? Hey, very good morning to you guys. It's a good morning to be inside and warm and all of that stuff. Uh, let's check out on Twitter. We want to start with... A shout out from our pal Dave oh. Burkett, Joe's, uh, uh, Joe's colleague over at the Free Press, uh, responding to somebody telling him that The Wire and Breaking Bad are required. Dave says, I don't watch much TV, TV unfortunately, outside, <laughs> of course, of the seven sports games. So, uh, Dave, we appreciate your continued viewership. And then we got a question for Joe. Uh, you guys touched on it a little bit earlier, getting to participate in the NCAA's mock selection committee in Indianapolis. Uh, John asking if there's any talk of using a different or better metric than the RPI by the NCAA. Guys? Mm. Joe? That's a great question, John. Actually, they don't just use the RPI. They use pretty much every metric out there, including 
the KPI. For anyone who doesn't oh. know, the KPI is the Kevin Pauga Index. He is the Michigan State Director of Basketball Operations. He came up with his own ranking system, ranking formula, a little bit different than the RPI. They're all kind of similar. They have their differences. But the NCAA now uses his, uh, his rankings as well. They try to use it all. They use Ken Palm. I mean, they have every possible way you can judge a team. They, they have it. How, I have to ask you about that, that experience. Tell us a little bit about what it was and what you guys came to. and Did it give you a better appreciation of what those tournament committee people have to go through to get that tournament right? All the badgering I got on Twitter during the process, I really got a, a better appreciation <laughs> for what they go through. But, yeah, definitely a better appreciation for what they look for, how intensely they look at these teams. You have team, I mean, hour after hour, you put two teams next to each other, you go through every single thing, you scour them. And then after you're done seeding it, you scrub, which means you compare each team on the line. Okay, is this team, should this team be ahead of this team? And you keep moving people up or down based on that. It's painstaking, but I think it's very thorough. I love this time of year. We get closer and closer to the tournament. A lot of the lobbying, the bubble talk, it's all good. Hopefully Michigan can, you know, maybe figure something out. We'll get that NIT process NIT figured out. Process. Too. Yeah. The NIT? <laughs> all right, coming up, a high school football showcase right here in the city of Detroit. We've got a couple of guests joining us right after the break here on the Suburban Ford 7 Sports Cave.